it's, it's probably up here for you. It's also in your bulletin. It's also in your Bible if you brought it. <coughs> it, 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 it. Uh, I haven't heard a yet. We're all ready on the same page. The word says, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you again for this, this morning. And God, it is great to worship you and to be with the saints. And God, I just thank you that we can rejoice because it is a day that you have made. So help us today. Uh, to rejoice in your word because the letter brings the letter brings death, but the spirit brings life. So, spirit, bring life to this word to each of our hearts today. Help us to see, hear, understand, and proclaim your goodness today. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 May be seated. Our message this morning, this morning is. Signs of life. So many, so many pastors, either this week or next week, kind of bother me sometimes. But others, they, they cast a vision, <coughs> share a prediction, and that just really bothers me. Mm -hmm. By the way, of what what is the next year is going to hold? Can I tell you what the next year is going to hold? More troubles. Yeah. Yeah. More problems. But Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. I promise you, I, you know, I don't think we can get around it, that this coming year we are going to experience more problems than we did last year. Look at the world as it is. Look at our lives the way they are. You don't even need anything else to happen around the world. Our own lives are a mess sometimes. But... In the midst of all of that, Jesus is still on the throne. God is still in control. And God will do what he said he would do in his word. There is no doubt in my mind that God will do absolutely what he said he would do. And if you doubt it, then you doubt the writer of the book who is God himself. Because when the Bible says the Holy Spirit inspired, spoke to men of old, or old men. <laughs> Works either way. But when he spoke, it meant something. And it was just, it was as true then as it was as it is now and as it will continue to be. Because the God who sees yesterday, today, and tomorrow, who knows all of these things, knows exactly what's going to happen, so you can take him at his word when he says that it's going to happen. Yes. Amen. Okay. Have a great day. <laughs> I, I wanted to tell you, I was, this past week I was watching a, I shared, I shared it with a couple people earlier this morning, but I, I was watching a Christmas Eve service from a church. If I told you, you might know it, you might not know it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not here to talk about that, about that church. But something that was said just really, irked me, annoyed me, made me upset. Uh, I mean, I went through the gamut of emotions when I heard this, but the pastor was up and they were doing this Christmas Eve worship thing in this church, and they had all the fancy tech, like instead of, because the fire, fire, fire marshal wouldn't allow them to do candles in their church, so they had these really cool bracelets on, and these bracelets would light up, you had to download something, which I hate. <laughs> You download something, and your your bracelet would flash all through the service and different things. So instead of having a candle, you had this. Whatever. I thought it was cool if you like technology. But the pastor said something that just bothered me, upset me, angered me. He said, "Now, as we, this is a worship experience, and we want everyone to be involved. However." The only crying baby that we want to have in the sanctuary tonight is the baby Jesus. Boy, something just began to stir. 
I'm sorry, you begin to. <coughs> By the way, I love kids in church, and I don't have a problem if they're crying when I'm preaching. If a preacher can't get over that, then you've got problems. Sorry. If a preacher can't handle a baby crying in church, then maybe you shouldn't be behind the pulpit. Because I love it. To me, excluding children in church excludes a very important segment of our churches. I know we have, sometimes we go and take the kids in the back, and, you know, and I'm thankful for Kim and Sherry. I really appreciate it. But I want to tell you something. This has been, since I heard that, this has this just stuck in me. Kids need to hear the gospel too. And I know they do if you used to. But anytime we exclude a child, you ever go to a wedding where it's adults only? I've been invited to weddings and they, and now of course, I don't have any kids, so it's easy for me. But I've been to weddings and stuff where they say, don't bring children. To me, like for instance, silence. I love that. I have no problem with him running around. Because to me, when I hear those footsteps patter, it's a sign of life. It's a sign to me that it's a wide and vibrant church and people are happy. You know, this morning, when we were just joking and having fun this morning in church, and that's a good thing, you know, it's why, you know, it's why I do it, you know, it's why I even said after Michelle had said that, I said, you know, must have a pretty good preacher. You know, and then, you know, people joined in. I want to hear the signs of life. If we came to church and everybody... Now, I believe everything should be reverent. The Bible said it should be done decently and in order. I get that. But I also, when we gather together, I want to see signs of life. I like laughing. Sometimes we don't laugh enough. Sometimes we need to be given permission to laugh. We do. Sometimes we, you know, we come to church or we you go through your work. I'm sorry, if I can't laugh at work, let's find another job. You know what I mean? I want to be able to laugh and enjoy. And I think it's very important in church that church be a place where people can fit in. Where people can can come to church, and when you leave, you can say, I, will, I am glad I came to church. I'm glad I came to church today. If you leave church sadder than what you did when you came in, tell me about it so we can change something, because I don't want you to ever leave here thinking, I could have slept through this. <laughs> I get it. Believe me. There's Sundays when I want to stay home. But once I get here, I am so happy to be with the saints. Because there's signs of life. There's people smiling and laughing and joking and singing and praising the Lord. Hello. But in the midst of all of that, and while it's good to come to church and laugh and all that, can I tell you, it's, things aren't always the best. Things aren't always the best in our lives. Sometimes we come into church and we are, we have dealt with something through the week or even that very morning that it's just tough. Maybe you're dealing with a child or a spouse or uh, a parent or whatever. You know, you, you dealt with something. And I remember as a kid getting up and going to church and it was usually pretty normal, but every once in a while on a Sunday morning, we were, everybody, you know, we had a big family, we would get ready to go to church, and things didn't always go the way, and, you know, you were disgruntled or something all the way until you got to the church door, and then you put on the fake smile. <laughs> well, I really, I'm really trying to pull back and asking people, how are you doing? Because most of the time, people lie to you. <laughs> Yeah. Even in church. <laughs> but I've come to understand that it, that laughing and feet running in church and, and singing and all these things are great. But 
Can I tell you, pain is also a sign of life. I was telling Linda this morning, someone asked me this week how I was doing. And I said, I feel pain, therefore I know I'm alive. <laughs> now think about that. If you are in pain, you must be alive because dead, dead people don't feel pain. <laughs> right? Or, you know? In fact, I'm sure Sherry has probably experienced some of this. The closer you get to that point, the more pain you feel. Hello, I know as I've gotten older, I feel more pain. Maybe you have too. I don't know. My mom told me she it was in her 40s before she ever knew what a headache was. But pain is also a sign of life because no matter how you get around it, life is full of pain. But does that mean that Jesus is not still in charge? Does that mean that our, our hope is diminished? Does that mean we give up on what the Word of God says? Absolutely not. Go back to our scripture that we were just reading. In verse 7, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence of the power of God may be of God and not of us. He says, we are hard pressed on every side. Does anybody feel like that at times? Feel like you're between a rock and a hard place? Feel like you're just in that place where the world, life, Whatever you're dealing with, it's just pushing and pushing and pressing you in. Yeah, some of you may be going through that, that feeling even now. He said, we may be hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Can anybody say hallelujah this morning? Hallelujah. That even in the midst of all of that, you are not crushed. Why? Because we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. It seems like you keep getting pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and it gets narrower and narrower, but you are not crushed. Why? Because you have something in you that the world doesn't have. He goes on to say, we are perplexed. Sometimes you, you ever just scratch your head and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, you, you ever see that statue, the, the name of it's called The Thinker, where the guy's sitting there going like this? Yeah. That's a man who is perplexed. He's been stuck there for a long time, he can't get out. He hasn't figured it out. <laughs> Sometimes life hits us, Things happen in our life, and we are just, how do I get through this? How am I going to get through this? How, God, I'm just, here I am, and I, you ever feel like you're in a fog? You ever feel like you're just, you don't know the answer to it? I get that way. I'm sure you do. Yeah. You don't have it, believe me, you don't have it that all together that you've got this down yet. Okay? <laughs> Sometimes you just are so perplexed and you're not sure what the next step needs to be. But he said we can be perplexed but not in despair. You see, when despair sets in, a lot of other things can happen. Depression can happen. Okay. Hello? Depression can kick in and you can begin to just turn in. That's what depression really is. It's turning in on yourself. So you can be perplexed, but you don't have to be in despair. Why? Because of this treasure we have in these earthen vessels. It's not a sin to be perplexed. But when you get to despair, you miss something. And that is Jesus. He said, persecuted, but not forsaken. You ever feel like sometimes you are or your faith is being persecuted? I feel like that sometimes. I really feel like that sometimes. 
I remember years ago, someone set me up for a job with FEMA. And I thought, oh, this was a good job. It was a really, really, really good job. I went to, an inter to the interview. That morning as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to be persecuted for the name of Jesus. And I'm going for a job. So I got there, sat in on this interview, and this guy tells me, I'm, we're going through a thing, we were there about a half hour, and I, he said, I see on here you don't want to work Sundays. And I said, yeah, uh, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor at the time. And I said, yeah, I'm a pastor. And I really, really, really would like to be in church. I get emergencies happen. But on the normal time, I want to be off on Sundays. He looked at me and said, we can't do that. Because, get this, this is what he told me. Acts of God are not covered by that. <laughs> Acts of God don't eliminate me from being in church. And I, I looked at him, and I'll be very honest, I said to him, oh, but I bet you if a Muslim came in here and wanted a prayer mat and wanted to take certain times off during the day to, to bow to Mecca so that they could pray, you'd give it to him, wouldn't you? And he said, well, yeah. I said, you just discriminated against me. Amen. And he looked at me and he said, well, that's our rules. And I said, well, you know what? I don't need this job that bad. And I said, I hope you find Jesus. And I walk out. <laughs> See, God already prepared me for this. And I just didn't know when or where. And I'm thinking, you know. See, sometimes we are persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. But according to his word, he said, we are not forsaken. How many... Just tell your neighbor, I'm not forsaken. I'm not forsaken. You believe it? Yes. That no matter what the world does to you, no matter how much persecution comes on you, you have not been forsaken because Jesus said, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. See, there's, there's a method to this. <laughs> He goes on to say, we are struck down, but not destroyed. Jerry came up to me earlier before church and tried to push me out of the way. And I came back with full forward. When I pushed him harder. Sometimes you feel like you're just struck down, you're pushed down. Like, whether work or family or whatever, life. All these things that go on around us, you feel like you're just being pushed down. You ever feel like that? I do. Like you can never get ahead, it seems. <coughs> Take a side step here and talk to you about reality. We learned this in Sunday school this morning. That there are times when you feel like something, but it's not really the truth. Because I'm telling you, truth, and I've said this over and over again, truth overrides fact. You may be, be, be being pushed down or feel like you're being pushed down, but I tell you the promise of God's Word that He said, we may feel like we're struck down, but I'm not destroyed. Amen. You see, truth overrides fact because truth... Your body may say one thing, and that may be a fact. I talked about this a little last week. My body may feel like it's miserable. Stick around me for a day when I'm passing the kidneys. You won't know what miserable feels like if you haven't gotten to that point yet. But each of us has our own problem. And you feel like you're being pushed down. You feel like it's Things are just... But God's Word says in the midst of it all, you're not destroyed. You see, because I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that God is in control. I know that however I may feel physically, emotionally, or whatever, however I may feel, 
God still sits on his throne and no one can vote him out. Amen. No one can bump him off. Satan tried it. I'm going to ascend to the throne and be like God. Ha! Didn't take him long. In fact, at the moment he thought it, God knew it. God knew it before because God knows everything before and during and after it happens. But God struck him down and cast him down. The one who was called the son of the morning thought he could be above God and he found out how much of a little pee on he really was. <laughs> I'm serious, friends. When, you know, when sometimes I heard, uh, I don't know if you know who this woman is, her name is Shirley McLean. Yeah. Yeah. Excited. One time many years ago she stood up and said, I am God. Now, now, just imagine this picture, and I'll put it into our perspective. If you saw a little ant crawling across the ground, lift its, <laughs> lift its hands up and say, I am God, and you're standing above it, what are you going to do? <laughs> no. You see, our ambitions mean nothing without Christ. We may think we're big shots. We may think we've got it all together, but we really, really don't. I'll tell you this, I am probably one of the least together people you'll ever meet. Maybe not. Maybe you're worse than I am. The thing is, it doesn't matter, because without Christ, all of us are just like that little ant. <clears throat> he goes on to say, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. We should have had communion this morning. <laughs> that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. See, this treasure we have in earthen vessels is Jesus Christ himself. And let me tell you, when he's in your life, there are signs of life. As bad as your problems may be, as tough as your life may be happening, even at this moment, or maybe it's happened before, or maybe it's going to happen, as tough as it is, what matters is Jesus is in you, this treasure in earth and vessels. If it's in you, then you can be perplexed, hard-pressed, persecuted, struck down. But it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not diminishing your problem. What I'm saying is, because if you carry about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in your body. I am waiting for the day when God does something in my back. And He... Uh, most of you know I have what's called a, a, an inverse horseshoe kidney. My kidneys are literally fused together as one and upside down. That's why I have some stone. But I am waiting for the day, friends, when God does something and he takes a hold of my back and he does what only he can do. And that may be today. Hallelujah! You'll hear me shouting from you can tell. <laughs> it may be tomorrow, and it may not be until the Lord returns, but I promise you it's going to happen. Yes. Whatever you're facing, now, I, I get it. Emma, you're probably just, you're, you think you're invincible at this point. <laughs> but I promise you, as we get older and things happen, we look at things in our life. How many people are allergic to something? I heard a guy one time say that who knew that if we, if an invading country ever wanted to feed us, all they had to do was drop peanut butter on us. <laughs> <laughs> so many people have so many allergies to so many things. So many people, like probably every one of us, or at least 95% of us, have something going on in our body. Everybody does. To some extent. Why? 
because we are living in a fallen earth suit. So that means we're going to have problems. We're going to have issues. We're going to have, you know, we're going to have things that go on in our life. But I want to tell you a promise. I'm a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. That God is still in control, and no matter what, He'll take care of you, whether it's today, tomorrow, or when Jesus comes again. Your problem will be taken care of. Because God has the final say of everything that happens. Well, hallelujah! <laughs> I'm telling you, this isn't a message to say, you know, the, the old he hall song, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, and excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. This is not that message. <laughs> this is not that message of I'm hard pressed, I'm perplexed, I'm thrown down. I'm, yeah. This is not that message of give up. This is the message of I've got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. And he says, caring about the body of Jesus Christ within us, we have hope. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Welcome. He says, according to our memory verse, we who live, how, how many people here are alive today? Well, some of you just, I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering now. But he says, we who live are always, always, remember, that in the Greek that means always, okay? And just, you know, just, just none of these things. Are always delivered to death for Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. I read this and I tell it's not talking about heaven when I get to heaven. I like songs about heaven. And songs about my mansion over the hilltop. Hello. I like those songs about walking on the golden streets and doing all these. I, I love them. But this is not necessarily referring to that. This is talking about your present day affliction. Look at that. Because he said we're always being delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. He's talking about you. talking about your trouble. And he's talking about today. Well, I'll, I'm telling you, friend, I keep saying this, I'm preaching better than your amen. <laughs> because I'm telling you, this is a word that will make you say hallelujah in the midst of your trouble. Oh, glory to God. In my mortal flesh, I want the life of Jesus to be manifest. I want Jesus to be alive in my life while I'm still living. The psalm says, I would have given up hope unless I believed that I would have seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. You see, I, it's fun to sing the songs about heaven, but I'm telling you, the Comforter abides with me. Now. Well, With a hallelujah. That's worth taking up a second offering. Let me get I am not, you know, you know this by now. I'm not one of those preachers that dwell on money. But I found out in the new year we're going to start changing the way we take up offering. Okay? I heard this from some pastors. Okay? One pastor said when we take up our offering, we draw a circle in front of the church. And we throw it up in the air, and whatever lands in the circle is God's, and whatever outside the circle is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Another pastor says, well, we draw a line. We do it simply, but we draw a line. <clears throat> and we throw it up, it lands on one side of God's, and it lands on the other side of the line. Mm -hmm. The other pastor just set me straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, you're all doing it wrong, because from now on, we're just going to take up the offering, throw it up in the air, and whatever stays up is God's, whatever comes down. Is God. <laughs> oh. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> 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 but I'm telling you, friend, we can.
can rejoice knowing that this Jesus can be manifested in our no, in our mortal bodies. Yes. That goes for whatever problem you have. I don't care what it is, God is able to take care of it. And we may, let me tell you, we may feel like, would you just hurry up, God? You ever tell God that? Just, would you hurry up, God? I'm getting a little worn down here. And he always comes back. You can be worn down, but you're not destroyed. Amen. He goes back, see, these words were not just written by Paul to the Corinthian church. They were spoken by the Holy Spirit to us today. Yes. That whatever you're facing, whatever you're doing, it's okay. Because we have something in us, that treasure we have in these earthen vessels. And he is Jesus Christ. Look at verse 12. And I'm going to close in about an hour. <laughs> he says, so then death is working in us, but life in you. I'm going to read on to this is just, I wasn't going to, but this is just too good. You like the one preacher one time? He was an hour into a sermon, had 12 pages of notes, and said, I was going to stop, and I just feel like going on. And he ended up preaching for an hour and 45 minutes, and everybody <laughs> forgot what he even said at the beginning. Anyway, he said, the writer says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, do we all have the same spirit of faith here today? Yes. One Lord. One baptism. We're all together in the body of Christ. If you have received Christ and Christ lives in you, we are in the same faith. You may, you may not see it the same way as I do or, or someone else, but we're in the same faith. Let me just assure you of that. If you believe, hello, if you believe Jesus is the only way to salvation, if his blood provided the only means of atonement for your sins, then we're in the same club. Amen. Okay? Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus, and will present us with you. Look at that. Oh, that's good. I believed, and therefore I spoke. Can I tell you, sometimes we don't speak what we believe. Or we don't believe what we speak sometimes. How many of you tell, will tell me, you don't have to raise your hand, but do you believe that with God all things are possible? We say we believe that. I say I believe it. Hey, I've been preaching for over 35 years and I say I believe it. Do I always speak it? No. <laughs> God gets these things. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not Please, I'm not, I'm not judging or condemning you. But hear this. He said, I believed and therefore I spoke. It's time we start speaking what we believe because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And instead of cursing, I heard years ago, instead of cursing the darkness, we need to bless the light. Amen. Instead of focusing on our problems, I get it. We've all got problems. We've all got things you're dealing with. But if you let that consume you, it will destroy you. But instead of focusing on that, we need to begin to declare what the Word of God said. If you believe it, speak it. I'm telling you, friends, I believe there's power in speaking the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. People say, well, I believe. Well, then speak it. Hello. I was telling Michelle earlier this week, I've been battling a kidney instead. Can, I, I say battling, but I already know who's the victor in this battle. Jesus. As we learned in Sunday school, we, we battle, we overcome from victory, not in order to get it. Because I'm telling you, he's already won the battle and God has already won. He already has the victory. But I told Michelle that 
some things that were going on. She was asking me about something, and I was telling her, she was asking me how I was feeling, and I told her, and I said, but I believe whether today or tomorrow or someday, I've got a healing coming my way. Friend, God, you, you may be dealing with something, and God may, uh, let me tell you, talk about marking a place on the map here in, in Jennings, Maryland. God could deal with it today. Do you believe that? Yes. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. I heard a minister one time say it's percolating. In other words, it's working its way. You know. Or maybe it won't happen until Jesus returns. But it will happen, I promise you. Because if, if, if it doesn't happen, then the word of God is a liar. It says that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I was and am healed. Past and, and future and present. Spoke of it in Isaiah. Peter also confirmed it in the New Testament. Friends, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And that doesn't mean health-wise, too. It can be anything. But I promise you, God is going to deal with the situation either today, tomorrow, or sometime in the future. I promise you, there are no people limping around heaven saying, I've got a backache. Amen. <laughs> There's not a soul in heaven saying, I've got this. Can I tell you, there's not a poor person in heaven either. Because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Oh, friends. I'm not, all, I'm not about the money. I, I could live in a shack. But I'm telling you, friends, when I get to heaven, there will be no lack. That's a promise from God. And according to Psalms 23, we, we can experience it Spiritually, even to this day, because the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Some people say, I shall not want. Well, if you lack, don't you want something? But if the Lord is your shepherd, you lack nothing. You may not have seen the revelation of it yet, but it will happen. It will happen. It's a guarantee, not from me, but from God and His Word. Yeah. God's going to take care of things. I want to assure you today. Just bow your heads for a moment. And Father, I just thank you that you are in control. And because of our great shepherd, we can lack nothing. Nothing missing, nothing broken. God, I just thank you that the life of Jesus can be manifested in our mortal bodies. I thank you that life is working in us in the midst of problems. There are signs of life in each of us. In each of us who have that treasure in, in our earthen vessels, that treasure being Jesus, God, you have given us hope. Father, I just pray today that for each of us we will understand, believe, and speak what your word says. So Father, I thank you for ministering to each person today. I thank you for being the overcomer in our lives. In Jesus' name. And as I, as I conclude that part, I just want to ask you, if you need prayer for something this morning, I want you to come up. If you need prayer for I don't care what it is, because my God's able. If you feel perplexed, or push down, pressed, hard pressed, whatever it is, come on up. We're going to lay hands on you. And we're going to pray over you. So that you will, it's, 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 it's not that I can bring you victory, but I'm telling you, friends, the victory is already in you. We're just going to give you permission to be released. Come on. If you need something, come on up. Don't be shy. Remember the song, Reach Out and Touch the Lord as He Passes By? You'll find He's not too busy to hear your eyes cry. Come on, friends. This is, don't, there's no time to have our cry and think we can handle it. You can't handle it. Come on, friends. That's it? Everybody else is good? Oh, don't lie to the preacher. More importantly, don't lie to God. So, 
Use it, you who think you're okay, you can come up too and stand behind these people. We're going to believe God from here. I don't care what it is. I don't care what, the, what each of these up here is. Seven people. Oh, God, serve us. I don't care what you're facing today. God is able. He is able to touch, to heal, to provide, to change. If he has to, he'll hold up earth to do it. Do you believe that? anoint them as I anoint them. We're going to pray. I want you all to be praying over them. You don't need to know what's going on because God does. And God knows how to deal with it better than you do. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on each one of these. We anoint them with oil according to your word. This is not something that was designed by man, but it was according to your word, what you spoke. God, we just declare today that it that you are in control, that you are in charge of whatever is going on. That God, you are the answer to the problem before we know what the problem is. Sometimes. You've got it all under control. And so, God, right now we declare unto them whatever it is they're facing. Whatever it is. I don't care what the devil is from in them. They have something within them that is bigger than their problem. They have a treasure in their mortal bodies that is bigger than their problem. And that treasure is Jesus Christ himself. God, I just pray today that he would be manifested in their mortal bodies. He would be manifested in their problems. He would be, he would be manifested in their mountain. God, we just thank you today. God, we just declare and call it done according to your word. And God, we just pray, even today, that we would see the manifestation of this miracle in their lives. And Father, I just, even for those who didn't come up to be anointed, God, I just pray that for everyone else back here, whatever it is they're facing, that God, the life of Jesus would be manifested in them. That whatever it is they're facing, God, Jesus shines. God, we just thank you. And in advance, we give you praise and glory and honor. Because it is in that name of Jesus that every knee bows. And that includes every situation we're facing today. Every knee bows to the name of Jesus. So God, we just thank you today. And we call it done. We declare it finished by the work of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 Give God a hand. It's
Amen. Amen.